Good morning from Alaska. I'm Steven, she's Andy, and we're aboard the Majestic Princess, bringing you packing tips for your Alaska cruise. That's right. First, we're gonna go through some items that are gonna be good for you on just about any cruise you're gonna go on. Then we'll get to some items that are specific to Alaska and will really help you out while you're here. And finally, stick around to the end because we're gonna let you know exactly what you don't need to pack for this trip. Number one, and especially important if you carry a lot of devices, cameras, that sort of thing, a USB charging dock. This is the one that we carry. It's by Anchor. We'll link to it below. It is so incredibly handy because these cabins have like one port, no two. They have two plugs to plug things into. <laughs> so if you've got phone, iPad, laptop, cameras, multiple cameras like we have, you are going to be charging everything 24 seven. One of these docks is genius. You don't need a power strip. All you need is one of these. You can plug a whole bunch of stuff into it, get everything charging overnight while you sleep, and you are good to go from one day to the next. The next item, luggage tag. Yeah, cruise lines have you print out paper luggage tags that they tell you to staple or tape onto the handle of your bag. The thing is, that could rip off really easily, and then who knows, your bag could get left behind, misdirected, yeah. not worth the risk. Fortunately, you can get these sleeves on Amazon. They come in exactly the right size by cruise line. So you're gonna wanna search by the cruise line that you're sailing because different ones are longer and narrower, a little bit wider and shorter like this. Ours is Princess and I think it also is the same size for a couple of other cruise lines. So there are generally two sizes you're looking for. Search by your cruise line, you'll get exactly the right size that you need. It's got this nice little hook here. Uh, this just untwists and goes right on the handle of your suitcase and then once you attach it it's not going anywhere and your bag will find its way to your cabin this next one is essential reusable water bottles with filters while the water on a ship is drinkable we like a little extra filtration so we've got these here from Brita and we'll link to them below for you to check out if you like you can buy bottled water on a ship it does cost extra so you're gonna need that specialty drink package if you want to get it but the fact is who needs all that extra waste the water on the ship is very drinkable it tastes good especially with the extra filtration and you can just refill it everywhere you go Everybody nowadays is packing the hand sanitizer gel and sanitizing wipes. Whether you're on a cruise, a flight, heck, just going to your grocery store, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to last year, this is a must have everywhere. But you know, even after all this stuff is over, it's so good to have that on you. Cruise ships have always had hand sanitizer stations all over the ships. They're very aware of people being in close environments, being able to share germs, and they take a lot of precautions. But always carry your own. You just never know when you might be caught without some and you're gonna want it. This is a fun one, walkie talkie. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's a little bit geeky, but honestly, they are so invaluable. We are on airplane mode the entire time we're out. Even when we pull into port, we could probably connect to a cellular network, but we just don't wanna risk getting hit with any roaming charges. So, we got walkie-talkies. They've got a range of what, like six miles or I something? I think so, yeah. And we're never that far apart from one another. But there have been times where we've separated. Steven has run into a shop or something while I'm taking pictures outside and I'll think of something and be like, oh, please pick up, you know, a pack of gum or something from in the store. And I can't just text him. Walkie-talkies are so great to have handy. So we highly recommend you invest in a pair of them. Wouldn't go anywhere without them at this point. This one's more about security than packing, but it's equally as important. Do yourself a favor and get a VPN service. Public Wi-Fi, there's no telling who might be on there trying to access your data or hack into your system. So this way you've got yourself completely protected. And the last one to bring with you on all cruises, cash. Definitely bring a good amount of cash with you. You're gonna wanna tip bartenders, crew, your cabin steward. With a lot of these cruises, they do add service fees on at the end and you get a bill for that. Or in some cases, they just kind of bill you up front as part of your overall fee for the cruise. But if someone really takes great care of you, you're gonna wanna give them a little extra. Also, when you're in your ports of call, some of the shops may only accept cash. They may not take cards or Apple watches or any kind of electronic payments. So that'll come in handy and also for negotiating because if you've only got cash to offer, it may come down on the price a little bit for you. These next items are specific for a trip to Alaska and the first one is so essential, waterproof hiking boots. 
Here in Alaska, especially in the summer, you're getting all kinds of weather, but it is the wet season. This way, when you go on your shore excursions, whether you're going on a whale watch or a hike, your feet are gonna stay dry, they're gonna stay warm, and they're gonna stay comfortable. The next item is ponchos. Just like with hiking boots, this one is for the ever-changing weather here. You're gonna wanna bring like kind of a waterproof jacket or winter coat of some sort, but the ponchos are great because if you're carrying a bag, especially if you're like us and you're carrying gear, you're gonna want an extra layer of protection to go over everything. Okay, next up, sunglass straps. Yeah. We practically live in our sunglasses, so especially in the cases like this where we're out doing hikes or more active things, we've got gear in our hands, this really makes it to where we don't have to worry about our glasses falling off our faces. Especially on a boat, if you're on a whale watch or even if you're just kind of looking over the edge of your cruise ship, last thing we need is to be dumping more plastic into the ocean, especially expensive <laughs> prescription plastic. <laughs> All right, for the last Alaska specific item, we're bringing it back to the weather layers yeah expect weather and this way if you're doing multiple layers you can always shed one at a time as the weather gets warmer if it does get warmer if not you're covered absolutely we had a beautiful day in juneau we got a terrible day today sorry about that uh, i apologize for no rain hopefully we'll make it up to you someday we were expecting to be cold we ended up carrying around our coats and everything the whole time so you just never know what you're gonna get now for the things you don't want to pack for a cruise. A surge protector power strip. Absolutely. They don't allow them on cruises. It has something to do with the way the power runs throughout the boat. They will confiscate it if they find it in your luggage and they do check all your luggage. So just leave the power strip at home. Like we said, the USB charging dock is a great alternative. It gives you plenty of ports to charge all of your devices. Another item you don't need to pack is a hairdryer. Like most hotels, they provide one for you in the cabin. It's actually hardwired, I think, right in. We can't even find where this thing plugs in. So it is here, it is ready to go, it's right in front of a mirror, and one less thing to carry in your luggage. Similarly, another thing you do not need are towels. Not only are there towels in your room, and you could get more if you need them, but there are also even towels by the pool, more beach size. So they got you covered no matter where you need one. And finally, the last thing you should not pack when going on a cruise is alcohol, including beer. However, you can bring a bottle of wine if you like. Depending on where you're from, you might find the drink prices on board a ship to actually be really reasonable. We're from Los Angeles, and so for us, these drinks are on the cheaper-ish side. If you're from a smaller town, might be a little pricier, but hey, you're on vacation, so go ahead and splurge. And if you're drinking a lot, you might find that the drink packages are worthwhile. However, you can bring your own bottle of wine if you're just gonna have the one. They won't charge you a corking fee for that. But if you pack any other alcohol, including beer, they're gonna take it out of your bags. So that's our list of packing do's and don'ts for your Alaska cruise. If there's anything else you can think of, leave it in the comments below. Let other travelers know. Let's help everybody get prepared. Speaking of the alcohol aboard a ship, should we go take advantage of that drink package we Let's got? do this. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna go have a drink. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate you tuning in for this little roundup of ours, and we can't wait to take you on the next adventure. See you next See time. Ya.